All right, our next guest says that high interest rates and high inflation have created a challenging environment across all the major asset classes. We want to bring in Ewan Monroe, who's the CEO of Newton Investment Management, which has more than $100 billion in assets under management. And Ewan, I guess it's challenging if you've missed out on what the major averages have done to this point. Yeah, I think it's more looking forward. Clearly, there's been uh, there's been strength in equities, and we haven't necessarily been negative about equity markets. It's more a forward-looking basis. That we've had interest rates rising very, very rapidly, one of the highest interest rate cycles ever, um, and a lot of debt has been termed out. And so, the refinancing consequences on corporates and on the household sector really haven't been felt yet. Uh, and so, there's that del delayed response. So when we look at the earnings season at the moment and the, the success that companies are having in beating earnings, it is on the basis of earnings expectations having dropped quite materially over the last 12 months. So it's a relatively easy beat. I mean, that makes sense when you worry about the debt load that has to be refinanced or is in the process of being refinanced. But you've also got inflation coming down uh, pretty rapidly. And uh, when you look around, interest rates could be nearing their ascent as well. You do. You've got, you've got inflation coming down. I think one of the things that probably I would take issue with is that the interest rate futures, the yield curve, is anticipating that inflation can come down and then interest rates can drop really quite quickly afterwards. So you've got this inversion in the yield curve. Um, my view is that inflation will only be beaten if you keep inflation higher for a bit longer than expected. Oh, you have to keep it higher. high enough yeah. to get through this refinancing wave. Otherwise, it will have no effect. So you think the optimism that's been built into the markets is based on the faulty yield curve where the market hasn't caught up with the Fed yet and you think the Fed will ultimately win? I think the optimism is quite uh, narrowly defined. So there's a couple of, you know, in tech and excitement about IT, there's a number of really narrow areas that have done very well and they've lifted the indices. And I, I think there could be something of a change in leadership. We're excited about artificial intelligence, the same as everybody else, but there's some other... Uh, themes that could drive return um, over the next four or five years that are largely ignored. And the valuations are more interesting in some of those areas. When you talk about uh, companies and households having termed out their debt, they've locked in these low rates for a long period of time, that would also seem to mean that the Fed's impact has been blunted. And you talk about it in terms of a lag, but are we, are we sure to see the, the full uh, weight of what the tightening has been on the economy if, in fact, we can have this slow transition toward higher interest expense? I, I think at some point this needs to be needs to be faced into you know that the, you know if you have um, built your your enterprise on significant debt I think in the it might be felt more in the private uh, sector or private assets private equity and so on where very often debt was uh, used extensively as financial engineering and I think that's where there could be some pain um, so that's where I would expect it to show up. You, you like dividend-paying stocks. You think that's really the turn that investors should be looking to at this point? We do. I mean, to some extent, maybe it's a, you know, I, I've got growth managers within Newton who are um, very used to buying things on high multiples if they're excited about the growth prospects of the company. I'm from, personally, although I'm CEO now, I'm from a macro background, and I tended to deal in entire asset classes. And when an equity market was anywhere above 20, 20, 20 25, price to earnings, I started to get a nosebleed. So you have to take me from, from my, my, my background. But I don't want to have to believe in really, really strong growth to buy into an investment opportunity. And if I do, as, as we do, we feel interest rates are going to be higher, it's going to be quite difficult for companies to refinance. Growth is not going to be abundant. There's definitely going to be winners. There are going to be people that will find growth in a challenging environment. But it's always best, in my view, in those circumstances, not to have to rely on strong growth. And so buying into companies on unchallenging valuations that have got really good cash flow streams. Because some people forget that you know, equities are real assets. They're operating in the real economy. They give you protection against inflation. And so when you see high interest rates, too many people think nominally. They think that 5 or 6% is a very good uh, income level. 
it's not so great that inflation sticks at 3 4 percent. Sure. You know, I, I know you can't talk individual stocks, but BP this morning said that it was raising its dividend by 10 percent. The CEO said that's because they bought in 10 percent of their float. So they can raise their dividend to individual investors by still spending the same amount of money. Yeah. Um, and that's what you've seen through a lot of these oil and gas companies. They're all doing similar sort of strategies. That's the type of thing that makes sense to you? It does. If you think about the demographic of people who are um, correctly positioning themselves in the equity market, very often, whether we like it or not, the, the people with money are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. They're older people that have built wealth over their lifetime, and they need that money to work for them to generate an income into retirement. To some extent, if they miss out on NVIDIA or, or Tesla or whatever, that's not so much the point. It's have they got a portfolio that's going to drive useful income that's going to keep pace with inflation. And that's why I feel it's more, it's more what's the right thing for people to be investing and necessarily, not necessarily, what's going to give them the absolute best return in a feverish, excited market.